Hey, welcome to another episode of Go Bros. I'm Philip, and I'm Luke. And today we might actually break a sweat in this episode. <laughs> we just might, or might bust a nut because I'm still recovering from my vasectomy because apparently my body is like a weak little girl body. Um, but I now am it very is. excited. <laughs> what? I said now it is. <laughs> now it is yeah <laughs> but i'm very excited about this i don't know if you can tell in my shot or not because the desk is in front of us but i am sitting on an exercise bike luke tell us about uh, what you're doing what i have on the floor i'll show you i'll bring it up in the shot and we'll also put a a, a lay over here so you guys can see a, a shot of it i have a set of pedals so it's an exercise bike that you can put under your desk i work from home so this is really convenient um has a tension control on the front and a very basic display right here on the front as well. And a convenient handle for carrying on the go, as one might say. Yeah, whenever I found out about this, I was pretty excited, but I didn't actually have an exercise bike. Um, but I'm like, shoot, I can get something like that for free off Facebook, Marketplace, Craigslist. It was actually unbelievably hard to get a, um, a used exercise bike. Because people are always buying exercise equipment and never using it because it's boring. <laughs> um, but then finally I got lucky and literally somebody like 500 feet from my house had a posting and I was able to just stick it in my trunk of my car and just barely make it home uh, without it falling out. And I Amazon so, primed uh, mine, so next day delivery. <laughs> so GoBros, what are you talking about? So we're actually talking about a product from a company called Verzoom, V-I-R Zoom. And um, the product is called the VZ Sensor which is a hardware peripheral for the Oculus Go and Oculus Quest. You know what that means, Luke? <gasps> Cross play. First play. Oculus Quest episode. Yes, yeah, so we're doing an <laughs> Oculus Quest episode, but I don't have Oculus Quest. <laughs> I say it counts. Yes. It counts. It counts. <laughs> it counts. It's our first Oculus Quest episode, so that should take our views from 100 to 1,000. Welcome, Oculus Quest viewers. Um, so uh, I'll, probably behind us right now, I guess over that shoulder, um, I'll, place, I'll be playing my unboxing video on what came in the mail. So um, we luckily get to test this for free. I'm pretty sure we have to send it back. Um, but you can buy this directly from the company. You can buy it uh, from Walmart or from Amazon, but it is $99.95. And installation, I, I got to say, was very easy. It took me longer to put the actual stationary bike I got for Amazon together. And then this little thing just puts it on real easy. It comes with a, uh, a nice kind of rubber band, for lack of a better term. It goes on the, uh, the bike and just goes around the pedal. Right here is a little sensor. And it pairs with the Go, and it's easy. I mean, the setup was remarkably easy, and the instructions were great. This company, from what I understand, because I hadn't heard of them before, but they've been doing this for a while. And in, in the past, what they had was actual their own bikes. And I think they had their own headsets that went with their bikes. But with the growing VR community, they decided that really the best thing for their product was to make it work with portable headsets such as the Oculus Go and the Oculus Quest. That makes perfect sense. So now you all saw the device Luke had. He can, no matter where he's going, take his Go, take this little piece of hardware, take his little pedals, and he can have a fun exercise experience anywhere he goes. Or he could go to a gym. Anybody can just take this stuff, go to a gym, hook it up to a gym exercise bike, and practice. Yeah, because nothing really currently mounts these. at all. I mean, the controller that yeah. goes in your hand, I just put it around my finger, and I just hold it with my thumb. And so, they, I mean, it has it where you can actually attach it to your bike handle, but for me, it was just as easy to keep it like this. And if I ever wanted to take it to a gym, it all connects very quickly. Now, the 99.95, you might be looking at this and like, where's all the money at? Because this seems like a very, very cheap device i mean it's solid i mean it works great and they give you like four batteries which is amazing look my was with what they mine had does. one pre-installed and then four additional batteries yeah mine did too which is really cool uh maybe because it had been used before to have someone demo it before but um the another thing about this i want to talk about price and let's talk a little bit about the quality some more 99.95 to buy it um, and you get a seven-day free trial, which I'm on my last day of the trial now. I'm we'll on talk day. about all the stuff that's in it. And then um, you can pay $9.95 per month for the premium plan. But there is a free plan where you get access and 
we'll we'll post we'll talk more about the free plan i think maybe after we talk about the apps and review the whole thing and if people you think would even use the free plan otherwise it's 995 a month or 99.95 for the year yeah i think we should take a look at it you know if if working out is your thing it ain't mine um, you know, you might not need something like this, but this is not my thing to work out. This actually could be very successful because I hate working out. I hate exercising, um, as you could probably tell. And so by having something like this, uh, that can do it in a VR world and turn it into a game, um, I think could have a huge impact on, on a market. So let's dive in. Let's put our headsets on, hop on our bikes and see what happens. Let's do it. As you can see, we are looking inside the uh, VR Play app. Um, they just released uh, multiplayer and explorer as well, which we haven't even looked at yet. And that's going to be kind of like Wander, but on an exercise bike. Right. So let's um, jump but, right. Yeah, let's oh, sorry, jump right into a game. What game are you? What game should we try first? Oh, you said you've done. Um, previously, you've told me you've done the uh, helicopter one. I have not. If you want to tell us about that. Yeah, the helicopter one, they call it one of the more intense ones. It probably, I would say, classifies as intense just because uh, there's a lot you have to focus on. <laughs> Turning your head and pedaling and stuff. But it is a really exciting way to try to get a workout in. We'll select the 10 minute one here. Fuel. So you can see as I'm pedaling forward, it will get a little bit higher. And then you can shoot your rockets. Hold the right button to aim and release it to shoot. Hold the right button to aim. Be able to talk and record at the shoot. same, or uh, yeah, and fire at the same time is kind of a challenge. Uh, you can lean to go one direction, lean to go the other direction. You hold A and let go to fire. So here's an example. I'm flying here along the mountains, and uh, I'm going to bypass some of this fuel. See how high we can get. And you push and hold and let. Go to fire! Do you think I got him from here? I don't think I got him. Oh, there he is. So this is a great way to work out. You can look up at the top, see how much time is left, how many spins you've done, your current RPMs. Again, tilting your head will turn your aircraft. And then trying to to target while biking and not running into a mountain is what makes this kind of an intense workout because you have a lot going on. Keeping the helicopter up in the air, checking how much fuel you have. I got 5.8. And then pedaling faster and faster and faster so that I can get this thing back up in the air. Which uh, game are you taking a look at, brother? I'm going to take a look at one of the Pegasus options. So there's like a gem hunt and then there's like a gate race. So I'm going to try the gate race. Um, and one thing about this one, um, I don't know if there's a way I can change it in the settings. But um, I'm kind of behind the horse's butt. 
like if I was in a carriage um, on the horse. So I'm going to try riding the horse. You really got to get your pedal speed kind of up. And really most of these apps kind of work the same way. Um, you tilt your head to steer, um, which is the reason that is, is you can still kind of look around as long as you don't tilt your head. So you can still take in the scenery. But then tilting your head, oh, raccoon, um, tilting your head makes you steer. And with the Pegasus, if you hold down Pegasus on the A button, out of energy to fly. spread my wings and fly like an eagle. But then I'm not getting all these juicy apples, so I don't know why I would want to do that. Oh, why am I crashing? Why am I crashing? What's happening? Oh, no. Oh, no. I don't know what I did wrong. Um... But uh, we have found that whenever we're recording, we do see that it, the game doesn't really act like it normally does. So I don't know if it's just we need to delete the apps and reinstall them. But whenever we record, it really makes the app really upset. But <laughs> playing when we're not recording, it works great. All right, Luke, what's the next app you're going to demo? Okay, here we go. I am doing the horse race now. So you pedal to make your horse gallop. The A button will lasso and you want to let go of it when it's at the top. Wah, I got one. And then of course lean to uh, get behind the right guy. Missed him. Uh, got him. Nope, missed him. <laughs> uh, ah, got him. Uh oh, that one's getting away. Oh my goodness, that horse has some fire under its butt. Okay, so I failed this wave. Doing wave one again. One. Two. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Got him, got him, got wave one. And I think I just trampled the guy. So this is exciting, going through Old West, got my horse. Now I gotta catch a bunch of bad guys. They ain't welcome here in these parts. Oh, I'm not really good with the lasso. I probably also should be wearing shoes on this bike because it is killing the arches of my feet. Which one you loading up? All right, so I'm gonna select tanks now. And tanks is one that you could actually do multiplayer. And um, I might use some of our footage from our previous time trying to record this, um, but there really is something Tank crazy commander. about trying to record and it just messes this app up for some reason. Um, but multiplayer works, it works great, but I'm just gonna show you what it looks like um, just from the single player aspect. Um, you're gonna tank. All right, you can look around. The one thing that's weird is since you're on a stationary bike, you can't really turn all the way around. So you kind of have to just deal with that part of it. Um, and of course, you got to pedal to move your tank and then uh, push the A button to fire. And there's little different pickups you can pick up. And I can't remember, the B button doesn't seem to do anything. Um, there are other tanks, but I don't remember what I have to do to turn, to be honest with you. <laughs> I don't remember what I do to turn. Your head. Oh yeah, you tilt the head. Thank you, Luke. Thank you. Tilt your head. That's the turn. Just like did every other Did you do the game. Thunderbolt? Is that the one you you did? Um, no, I did the Comfort one because one of them's one of them's like advanced and one of them's Comfort. So I'm actually doing the Comfort one, which is just flat plains area. So the other one's more hilly, which is why it's not Comfort. But that's uh that's the tank one. I'm gonna back out and try something else. Well, in the meantime, I'm over here uh, doing Tour de France and uh, bringing up the rear here. Um, so it's a bicycle, and as you would expect, there's actually a bicycle thing right here on a bicycle okay, game. Okay, fast out. pace now um, to the next in front of you. I want to ring the, door, uh, the bell. There it is. I can ring the bell. That's beautiful. Uh, again, tilting your head, steers you side to side, cut people off in traffic. Um, and this is one of those ones where... You gotta be honest to your own self when you're working out. It probably would be better if I turned the tents up a little bit more on this. But it, uh, you can see down here at your, in your HUD how much time you have left until you get to the, the next gate and uh, uh, how many meters you have to go. And of course your spins are at the top as well. All right, I'm gonna do the race car one now. This is one that is multiplayer. And what's nice is you can do a versus race and just start out by yourself and start doing your workout. <laughs> and I guess essentially you can get a good warm up. And what is nice about um, the these apps is when you load up the app, 
it'll let you know if somebody's already in a multiplayer session. Right? So that's really cool, too. Is, is, and there's not a lot of other apps that do that. I mean, Oculus just now built in the feature of when you log in on the go, it'll tell you what friends are already online. And I can't remember. It may now tell you what your friends are playing. But um, VZ Fit has been doing this a long time. This, has got, this is actually really rewarding. Um, leaning my head on this and pedaling. Like, this feels real. Even though I'm pedaling a... Uh, an indie like 500 style car it feels right i mean there's nothing about this that makes me nauseous it just it feels right it's real i mean right now my tension should be way up but this is this is just a lot of fun right now i could just keep playing this forever um and what's crazy about this is it it's not obviously the same style game but this is more fun for me and less nauseating than um vr carts which somehow got on the oculus quest <laughs> yeah all right so i've played explore before um they just came out with a multiplayer option but we're not going to demo that for you today you can figure it out on your own but one thing you need to know if you want to do the multiplayer is click more here on the main screen and then make sure you have matchups enabled by default mine was disabled so make sure matchups is enabled then click find matchup and i guess everybody who's in um explore right now would show up although that'd be pretty crazy 10 o'clock eastern time for someone to be in there but I just want to pop in real quick and show you how cool this is. If you like Wander, then you'll probably like this. So you can create your own ride. I haven't experimented with that. Um, you can explore rides. The best ones are probably going to be these ones that look flat, like Colorado River, Sedona, Arizona. Um, because Colorado River is what I'm on now. Um, and I'm going to click Ride Forward. It's going to start me over. And... Uh, it's just like Wander. You got to give the pictures some time to um, load. All right, mine looks like it's fully loaded. And just like the other games, you tilt your head to steer, but you can still look around and enjoy the scenery. So I'm going to get my pedaling going and steer. And one thing you may notice, like, wow, Philip, it looks like it's a movie almost. And the way they do that is they use a special form of distortion. You can notice on this sign here to my left, they use a so little bit of distortion to where you're not just literally driving and then teleporting every 10 feet. They, they, they kind of blur the images together to where you can kind of get that feel that you're actually in a moving environment. Um, like you can see everything up close is just one image that's been tore up uh, or, or distorted and twitched. But you, if you're keeping your eyes forward, you know, like you should be if you're riding a bike, you can still see um, the surroundings and kind of your peripherals. You get this beautiful um, cliff ahead of you. Um, but let me show you um, where it doesn't work. If I can get my menu up. Explore rides. Like Ireland. I went there once because I thought uh, my wife's always wanted to go to Ireland. So I looked here. And what are my options just for fun? Oh, you can favorite it. Okay, that's cool. Um, I'm just going to ride forward. I'm going to ride in reverse because I've never ridden it. I've never seen the end of it just to see. All right. So here you can see the distortion doesn't quite work here because you got, you're dealing with trees. Um, but if you're willing to, to ignore that, I mean, if this really were to drive you crazy, you can get an excellent workout using the play apps. But if you want to kind of trick yourself into feeling like you're outside and you're exploring some of the world, and this kind of works because, I mean, really, if you're pedaling hard, you're sweating, you're in a workout, you got music going, this is still pretty dang good. I mean, miles ahead of, think back as a kid when you had the little steering wheel game that uh, I remember a friend of mine had one that went with a VHS tape. <laughs> you would put a VHS tape in and then you had a steering wheel and you just kind of had to fake it. Um, playing with this, though, um, like right now, I am getting a little bit of nausea. Um, that's kind of to be expected because... <laughs> Your, your mind's eye is not really completely believing this, but um, if you're somebody who's never experienced motion sickness in VR, I'm sure you'd have fun with this. Um, it's still really cool technology. Um, I read somewhere recently um, that they're improving this all the time, but there's no way this is ever going to be perfect. You're always going to have this little bit of distortion here because they're dealing with images. Yes, they're 360 photos, but they're still photos. It's not like they have an actual, you know, 3D environment. If, if you don't want to deal with the distortion, then you go play in BZ Play and drive a race car or something if you want. All right, we got the headsets off. Luke, what are your thoughts? 
So I, I mentioned this. I'm not a big like workout kind of guy. That's not my thing. I enjoyed it. This, this was a really cool concept. Um, to me, this is a good, a good fit for my setup anyway. Working in an office, I just have the small little, you know, the pedals. I don't have the full bike. Um, so I can put that right under my desk. And then when I have a break, I can put my headset on and do a 15-minute workout during my 15-minute break at work. To me, this is – it's a genius concept. Like, the idea of it is just great. Um, I, there's a couple little things I need to work out. You know, I didn't – and I think it's just my setup with my bike. But the, the sensor on the pedal seemed to hit my foot a lot. Um, so I kept spinning it around the, the, the pipe instead of staying in one place. But I think I can work that out with just, you know, tighten it down a little bit. But the concept, like, in the game and the experience and gamifying the workout component, that's great. Um, and I feel like, for me, you know, there's a whole, you've got to own the workout experience and, like, make the bike harder to pedal if you want to actually get a good workout. Or if you make it too easy to pedal, you're just spinning your wheels and you're spinning way too fast. Um, and so you could, you could cheat the game if, if it's all about the game, but if it's, if it's for you, if your motivation is to try to make working out suck a little less then this does that. And it does it very well. Yeah. Cause if you look at it, it's not, there are better polished games. Okay. Yes. You the racing game with the puppy dog in it. VR carts is a little bit more polished. Blaze rush is more polished. If you look at the tank games, um, there's a game that we haven't played yet on here. For some reason, I only have Panzer Panic in my head, which we tried doing until we realized it was local multiplayer only. Right. Um, Reflex Unit. It's kind of a tank yes. game. Much more polished game. But still, the tanks was a lot of fun. And the whole thing is, is it enough to make you do the workout? And I always hated running. I, I hated running growing up. Everybody hates running. But I noticed at school, I had a buddy. One time we both got a B in gym, which really ticked us off because we always participated the most than everybody. And then we realized that we were always running because we would talk to each other the whole time. And so I realized like I hated treadmills and stuff. I hated going to the gym. But when I actually went and took my car and drove to a nice flat residential area and I just started running up and down the streets, a lot of new things to see rather than a giant straight line, I started really loving running. But I stopped because my legs were getting destroyed. And I never thought about getting a treadmill at home. I never even thought about an elliptical or a stationary bike at home because I knew it would bore me to tears. Right. But you saw in the video, I was kind of, I'm recovering from surgery. And every time since we, I've had this, the bike sitting in my basement now, I'm like, I want to hop on and play because it really is fun. It's that little bit extra of immersion, not to mention I want to get that high score. I want to get on the leaderboard. I want to see how well right. I can do. I want to see who is out there doing yeah. the Could I have made one more lap? Could I have destroyed one more tank? Um, yeah. And, you know, so you're right. There, there are better versions of all of their games. Except the helicopter one. I got to say, the helicopter thing was cool. I have not done I any other any Oculus. Yeah, okay. the helicopter thing was good. But they have a lot of games in this workout app. A lot of them. And for the amount of them that they have, they're good, right? Like, they're, they, they decided to do a lot of things well instead of one thing great. But none of them were poor, in my opinion. It's not like they decided to just release a bunch of crap. They, right. they released a lot of good stuff. And to me, that makes it – that answers the whole, do you get bored of it? Well, if you just get bored of riding a, a flying unicorn, then you can go – ride a helicopter and if that bores you you can do a race car if that bores you you can do a tank and start to cycle over again right and, or an actual bicycle is an option here so to me those are some of the advantages that this brings is they already thought about that that these kinds of workouts can bore you when you start getting bored you don't do the workout there's a lot to see and a lot to do one more positive thing before i want to talk about a couple of the negatives and maybe not okay. real negatives they have an sdk other developers can just go and download the SDK and use it in Unity, and they can make their app one that will allow you to use this as your controller. Mm. And that's just amazing. Like, imagine some of these these indie developers who are doing a who have their own space game or their own airplane right. game with with their own models and whatnot, little cartoon. Imagine one of those like a silly little like you see them in cartoons all the time. They're pedaling, they're pedaling a plane and making right. the. Meme. 
that, put that in the game and do it on. I, I tell you, I can see that being really cool in um, what's that? The uh, flying one, ultra flight, ultra light. Uh, um, ultra wings, yeah. Ultra yeah. wings. That's this would be a good fit for ultra wings because some of those are foot powered things. You know, that, yeah. that's awesome. I yeah, did not know that. Really that's really cool. Ultra. Especially well, since so, like, ultra wings is 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 you're steering with the controller. And so right. this, even though it uses, and I'm, I'm pointing out there cause my bike's actually out there in the studio a little bit. Um, they would need to have a way to where you could still use the go controller or something else too. Right. Um, but there are games that already do that. Like we see, I see advertisements for all sorts of other immersive body pieces that you can use that are compatible with go games. And I would love for more developers to see this thing and be like, Hey, that's a neat gimmick for me to get more people to buy my game. Because there are people yeah. who are fans of this company. Their Facebook page is pretty good and pretty active and they have their own forums on their site. There's, there's hundreds, if not thousands of people using this device bring them, have them buy your game because you've incorporated this healthy exercise technology that they're already using. Right. So the bads, which may not be bad. Eh, I've got some bads on my list. Let's talk about the price. Okay. Of just okay. the unit. Let's just talk about the unit. Okay. okay. This thing, what it reminds me of is it reminds me of, Luke, you remember when we were kids and they have these now, like, you, you once bought this little thing the size of a quarter that would go on the handlebars of your bike, and there was a device that would hook up on – that would rub up against your, your tires yeah, they, to tell you how – still make those. Yeah, the little speedometers for your bike. Speedometers yeah. for your bikes. That, that's what this feels like. Yeah. And it's $99. Yeah. But the difference is the, the, the one on your bike works with a magnet. <laughs> And this one works with an accelerometer. Um, so it's a little bit different, but yeah, I feel like the price of the hardware and then what it looked like, okay, the packaging was beautiful. I wish we, I had done a, a, an unboxing for you. I did. Um, it, it, did it was playing at the beginning of our episode. Yeah, it's playing at the yeah. beginning of our episode. <laughs> um, uh, the packaging is great. I felt like for the price, like what I was looking at and how it, it tied to my bike, um, I, I don't know. It didn't feel like ninety nine dollars. Uh, I and at the same, time, I don't know what I would change. Like I wouldn't want to make it zip tie because then you can't take it with you and go take it to the gym if you want to do. Like they make it to where you don't have to hook this to one bike permanently, like you would a, a speedometer. You can move this around to different equipment, which is great. Um, I don't know if the rubber bands weren't tight enough um, for mine. The controller looked a little cheap. Um, and so I would have preferred like for $99, I would have preferred that it ha maybe have metal buttons on it so that it would not wear as quickly. Um, so I did, I definitely felt like the hardware, they priced themselves too high on the hardware, in my opinion. You know, I, 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 I was wanted to ask you about it cause I don't even know if I'm qualified cause I couldn't make it right. I couldn't, I couldn't make this. I don't have the skills to make this device. I mean, well, let's, let's look what they are though. The, the two devices are the thumb one or what would hook on your handlebar is just a Bluetooth controller, right? Um, so it, it only has four buttons. This is also a Bluetooth controller. Um, it's a, a, a Matricom a headset or a, a wireless game controller works on Android, iOS, Apple TV. Uh, it cost me $19 on Amazon. And this is high quality. Like, I think it feels but, great to play with You also got to think about size, though. I mean, it's, it's easier right. to make things big. It's harder to make things small, too. Yeah, yeah, but again, you can go also go buy a pair of wireless Bluetooth headphones that are pretty cheap. Uh, so I'm just saying, like, it's size, Bluetooth in and of itself is a small technology. It's already made small. Like, that's standard. Bluetooth isn't big anymore. You can add a Bluetooth thing to your computer. They're very small devices. It's only got four buttons on there. Um, I did pop mine open just to see what the inner workings looked like. Um, it, it's a great piece of technology. It's built very, very well. But again, it's, it's plastic. And again, it, it's lightweight. You can easily remove it from a different bike if you want or just hold it. It's also connected to the other, uh, the thing, I don't know what you want to call it, the device that goes on the actual bike as well. Um, and it's an accelerometer. And again, those things, accelerometers do get to be pricey, right? If you want to replace your Go controller or replace a Wii controller, any of those types of things, they can end up a little on the pricier side. 
I'd just say that it definitely did not cost them $99 to make it. And um, there, I'm all for them making money. I want companies to make money. But there's that, where is that line, right? Where you price it too high, where you get fewer people buying it. And One thing you, you can take, you can look at it this way though, is you're paying $99. You're getting, let's say you're getting easily $40 worth of hardware. You know, it's Bluetooth, it's small, there's two pieces, $40, $50, sure. But you're also getting eight games. But here's the other conversation I wanted to have. If you don't pay the monthly $9.99 subscription, you're getting like, uh, I think, one game a day or something. You have multiplayer games. Exactly. So to me, it's like you were to go to a game store, GameStop, and go buy an $80 game, right? Um imagine if you went to GameStop and bought an $80 controller and it came with the, free, uh, the games were free or, or you bought the games and it came with the controller for free, right? Like that, that would make sense. But then what if you went and bought an $80 piece of hardware and then you, you still have to keep paying for the games. Like to me that the, it's the two of those things together where they're, I would call that double dipping. It's, Let's- Let's be fair, though, real quick. Let me, let me hop off camera because I have it open on my other computer screen just for a second. And uh, I'm just going to stay off screen and read this. <clears throat> um, so if you don't pay, so you, can, you, you buy 99 bucks and right. you get the device. You get, it says, it's the free membership. You get free play rotating games. So I don't know how many games rotate, but you don't get the entire library all the time. But right. even then, that's not the, really the end of the world because it's going to keep your exercise routine. You won't get bored. Right. I would agree with that. Try new things. But it does give you demos of all the play games. So you can always play them for a little bit. You're just not going to be able to play, you know, a full workout on them. Right. There's going to be multiplayer in rotating game, which sounds singular to me. So if you're wanting to do multiplayer – it's going to be whatever game is there, I guess, that day or that week, which is and kind of nice, too, because it focuses more players in there, right? And let's hope that everybody's got the same game, right, on the rotation. That's, That's what, what I meant. Because all... yeah, right. it would be horrible if it was different. And so, yeah, I mean, I get, I get all of that. I, to me, it just it seemed like I'm paying – I would be okay with paying that much money for the hardware if it came with software. And I, I could forgive some of the the the, the not high end quality. I mean, it, it's again, it's solid equipment, and I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about the bad on the price because overall, I really dig all of this. But I feel like if I'm if I have to pay monthly for the games as well, then to me, the hardware is only worth fifty bucks. But if you're, if I'm going to pay a hundred bucks for it, I want all the games. Like to me, that that's where the boundaries that that's where the the balance has to be. But to be able to have to pay a hundred bucks for the hardware and then ten dollars a month to keep the games uh, that then to me we're talking that that the prices themselves out of me wanting to use it uh, and they got to decide which game do they want to be in do they want to be in the hardware game or the software game if you want to be in both then you got to make the pricing for both competitive and i don't feel right now the pricing is competitive just because you're the only one doing it doesn't make it competitive if it's priced out of the realm where most people are going to use it you know, that's a good point. Like here, I was getting ready now to, to kind of disagree with you on a lot of that stuff. Cause I feel like it's still totally worth it, but would I have ever bought this on my own? Had they not given it to me? Right. Yeah. Full disclosure. They gave us the hardware so we could test Which it. I think we um, have to send back. Maybe they'll forget. Me. <laughs> but I think we're supposed to send it back. Um, but now that I have it and I know about it, once I'm, I get my second surgery and I'm fully recovered from that. I'm excited to play this. I want to right. play this a lot and I'm hoping to find other people playing this a lot and I can be competitive with and even play at the same time with. Yeah. You know, I think that you, you mentioned the SDK. I, again, again, they could, if they cut the price in half, all of some developers might be willing to spend the time to incorporate the SDK because all of a sudden it's the price point means more people will get it. But why put the effort into incorporating the SDK when it's like hundred bucks Who's going to buy this for a hundred bucks um, just to play, you know, the ultra light, ultra wings, you know, like to me, I, that's, um, it, again, it's a pricing model. I, I think overall it's, it's quality material. 
I, I'm happy with the, the product, both the hardware and the software. It's all good. I don't know if it's hundred dollars good, but it's all good. And it's certainly $50 good. I'll um, tell you what, I would, there's a uh, that, VR health app that wants you to pay twice as much money with only four apps in order for them to save all your data. And yeah, like the four the, apps they have the is meditation, neck stretching, and, and there's no social or multiplayer aspect in that. So that's no. craziness. This one is kind of almost a matter of opinion because there's people who spend yeah. a lot more money on their workout equipment, on their, I mean, shoot, yeah. a daily burn. People spend a lot more money on a lot of stupider things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like a daily burn subscription, just watching people work out on your TV is like $15 a month. Yep. Um, but this one is playing and being healthy and there there's not a lot of that out there but you're right i feel like if this hardware was cheaper and also if more people knew about it because i don't think yeah. hardly anyone knows this exists um if it was cheaper hardware i think more developers would try it and who knows are they yep. sending this hardware out to developers too because they tried it they sent it to us and say hey they saw my Btron 2000 episode where i was doing a workout and they said hey try this piece of hardware out and do it on your show and send it to your brother and are they sending these to developers too so that other developers are incorporating this i, into the I hope i don't know all right. Well, I think we should wrap this up because I think we're like going into like three hours now in this episode. <laughs> so so uh, I'm Philip from GoBros. Thank you for tuning in. Please let us know in the comments if you knew this existed, um, if you would try it out yourself. Um, are, are you willing to go order one now? Which, of course, the information will be in the description. Let us know if you decided, hey, I'm going to try this out. Thanks for the video, guys. been looking for something just like this. And I will be streaming this probably a month and a half from now once I get my next surgery and recover from it. I will be streaming this to Twitch because I think that would be a lot of fun. So check yeah. it out, twitch.tv slash Philip from GoBros. Luke, what else we got? Yeah, uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We cover those comments, but like and subscribe to our videos so that we – we know that you like us. We need that. <laughs> <laughs> and also, go to gobros.tv. That'll send you to our Patreon page as well, where you can get all kinds of perks. All right. And I guess that wraps us up. So until next time, I'm Philip from GoBros. I'm Luke. I'm Luke. We'll see you next time.